In the vast plains of ancient South America, millions of years ago, a menacing shadow loomed over the grasslands. It wasn't a dinosaur or a mammalian predator, but a colossal bird that dominated the food chain. These creatures, scientifically known as Phororachus or terror birds, were one of the most formidable groups of predators to have ever existed. Imagine a bird the size of a bear, with a hook-shaped beak as powerful as a crocodile's jaws and long legs capable of reaching speeds of up to 31 miles per hour or 50 kilometers an hour. These were terror birds, a family of extinct carnivorous birds that reigned in South America for millions of years, from the early Eocene to the Pleistocene, around 43 to 0.1 million years ago though some specimens suggest that they were present since the early Eocene. The discovery of Phororachus fossils began in the late 19th century in Patagonia, Argentina, an area known for its rich fossil beds and abundant Miocene-era remains. Fossils in this region were uncovered by Florentino Amechino, an influential Argentine paleontologist who made significant contributions to our understanding of South American prehistoric life in 1887, Amekino described and named Phororonchus longissimus based on a collection of bones that indicated the presence of a large, flightless bird with unusual features. The bones were remarkable because they showed that Phororonchus was unlike any modern bird. This creature had a massive skull and robust legs, suggesting an adaptation for terrestrial hunting rather than flight. Initially, some confusion existed over its classification due to its unique anatomy, but further study confirmed it as a member of the Phororachidae family, a group of large, predatory birds native to South America. These birds are characterized by their size, powerful beaks, and adaptations for running. Many Phororachus fossils were found in the Santa Cruz Formation in southern Argentina. This geologic formation is famous for its well-preserved Miocene fossils, dating back approximately 18 to 16 million years. During this time, the South American continent was isolated, creating a unique evolutionary environment for various species, including large, flightless birds like Phororachus. The Santa Cruz Formation has yielded numerous fossils of Phororachus, including fragments of skulls, beaks, leg bones, and vertebrae. Over the years, these discoveries have helped paleontologists reconstruct Phororachus' physical characteristics and better understand its role in its ecosystem. Although the fossils are often fragmented, they have been sufficiently detailed to offer insights into the bird's anatomy and adaptions, indicating a powerful land-based predator. Phororachus stood out for its imposing size and predatory nature. Fossil evidence suggests that it reached about 2.5 meters or 8 feet in height and weighed about 130 to 150 kilograms or 290 to 330 pounds, although size estimates vary with the completeness of the fossils found. Unlike most birds, Phororachus had a large, powerful body with a prominent beak, long legs, and a thick skull. The general appearance of Phororachus was both striking and intimidating, with its height, powerful limbs, and robust beak suggesting it was a formidable hunter capable of taking down various prey. Its body structure, combined with its large size and specific adaptations, is thought to have made it the apex predator in its environment. The skull of Phororachus was large and robust, a defining feature that hints at its role as a predator. Fossil skulls show an elongated shape with a massive beak, which had a sharp downward hook at the tip. This beak was structurally reinforced to allow the bird to exert a powerful bite, potentially capable of crushing bone. The sharp hook at the end of the beak would have been an effective tool for slicing through flesh and dealing fatal blows to prey. The large nasal openings on the skull indicate that Phororachus may have had a well-developed sense of smell, a feature common among terrestrial hunters. The strong, sharp beak, combined with the structure of its jaw and neck, suggests the Phororachus may have used a strike-and-shake method to kill its prey, similar to modern predatory birds like shrieks. 
This technique involves grasping and violently shaking the prey to incapacitate or kill it. The robust skull and beak of Phororachus were clearly built to handle the forces involved in such hunting techniques. The neck of Phororachus was thick and muscular, allowing it to exert substantial force while handling prey. This musculature was essential for supporting its heavy skull and beak, both of which required considerable strength to operate effectively. A well-muscled neck would also allow for quick, powerful strikes, further aiding in its hunting techniques. In terms of movement, the neck likely had a high degree of flexibility, enabling the bird to adjust quickly to capture prey or respond to threats in its environment. One of the most striking aspects of Phororachus was its legs, which were long, strong, and well adapted for running. Its limb structure suggests it was a cursorial bird, meaning it was adapted for high-speed terrestrial movement. The leg bones were thick and robust, capable of supporting its weight and providing the necessary power for rapid bursts of speed. Though Phororachus may not have been able to sustain running over long distances, it likely used its speed to ambush prey, similar to a sprinter launching into a chase. The talons on its feet were likely sharp and curved, although not as prominently as those of modern raptors that hunt by grasping and lifting prey. Instead, Phororachus probably used its beak for dispatching prey and relied on its powerful legs for mobility and maintaining balance while attacking. The combination of leg strength and speed allowed it to occupy a predatory role effectively, pursuing or ambushing smaller animals in its ecosystem. Unlike many birds, Phororachus had relatively small, underdeveloped wings, which were effectively useless for flight. The reduction in wing size is consistent with its classification as a flightless bird. Instead, it evolved strong, powerful legs that made up for its lack of aerial capabilities. The wings were possibly retained for balance during rapid movements or as a display feature in courtship or dominance rituals. Over time, however, the wings became vestigial, a common trait in flightless birds adapted for life on the ground. Phororachus had large eye sockets, indicating well-developed vision, which could have been critical for a predator. As a visual hunter, it likely had forward-facing eyes that provided depth perception, essential for accurately assessing distances when striking at prey. The structure of its eyes, combined with the size and orientation of the skull, suggests that Phororachus relied heavily on sight to locate and track prey over short distances. Its sense of smell may also have been fairly developed, as indicated by the size and position of its nasal openings. While vision was likely the primary sense for hunting, a good sense of smell would have been beneficial for detecting prey or other predators in the environment. All anatomical features of Phororachus point to an animal adapted to be an efficient predator. It was likely an ambush predator, capitalizing on bursts of speed to close in on prey quickly. Its long legs and powerful build allowed it to sprint and close distances rapidly, while its beak and strong neck enabled it to deliver lethal strikes. The structure of its beak and jaws suggests that Phororachus could consume a range of prey, from smaller animals to potentially carrion if the opportunity arose. Its feeding strategy was likely opportunistic, taking advantage of its size and strength to capture whatever prey was available. Terror birds stalked their prey between the Middle Eocene and Late Pleistocene, around 43 to 0.1 million years ago. The Phororchidae family had at least 20 species, with some of these giants weighing up to 770 pounds or 350 kilograms. Imagine a bird that size barreling toward you. Yeah, not exactly your backyard pigeon. Even with their massive size, these birds weren't chasing down anything huge. Their anatomy and their hooked razor-sharp beak suggest they specialized in outrunning and snatching up smaller prey. Think rabbit-sized meals. Fast, efficient, and deadly. But not the monsters you might imagine. But here's where things get interesting. A fossil dug up nearly 20 years ago in Colombia's Tatacoa Desert is rewriting what we thought we knew. In 2023, Researchers confirmed that a fragment of a left tibiotarsus, a leg bone comparable to our shin, belonged to a terror bird. 
Using a portable scanner from John Hopkins University, scientists created a detailed 3D model of the 12 million year old fossil. And what did they find? This particular bird wasn't just big, it was a serious heavyweight. The analysis suggests it could have been 5 to 20 percent larger than any terabird species known so far. So, as big as they already were, turns out some might have been even bigger. Despite their immense size, it seems one terabird may have met its match in Purosaurus, an ancient South American caiman that could grow over 42 feet or 12.8 meters long. Researchers believe marks on the terabird fossil match the bite patterns of this massive crocodilian ancestor. Whether this was the result of a direct encounter between two top predators or a scavenging Purosaurus taking advantage of an already dead bird, it's clear this fossil holds important clues about life and death in the ancient ecosystem. The location where the Tibiotarsus fossil was found also sheds light on where terabirds lived. These predators didn't stick to just South America. Around 5 million years ago, the formation of the Isthmus of Panama allowed animals to migrate between South and North America during what's known as the Great American Biotic Interchange. Evidence of terabirds found as far north as Texas and Florida suggests they were highly adaptable. These weren't just birds from Patagonia making a long trek, they were spreading out and thriving in new environments. Even so, their reign at the top of the food chain didn't last forever. Over time, increased competition from newly arrived canines and big cats likely contributed to their decline. While the terabirds themselves are long gone, their lineage lives on. Their smaller relatives, like the red-legged Sirima, are still impressive in their own right. In fact, Brazilian farmers used them to guard livestock from predators, continuing a legacy of fierceness in a very different world. The Terror Bird, like Titanus, was all about speed and precision. This 8-foot-tall, 300-pound predator had a razor-sharp beak built for slashing and stabbing smaller prey. It wasn't the strongest skull in the animal kingdom, but it was perfect for quick, repeated strikes. In an open space, this bird's agility could make it a nightmare to catch. Its powerful legs weren't just for running, they could deliver deadly kicks too, almost like a prehistoric Bruce Lee on steroids. Now, Smilodon, the saber-toothed cat, was in another league when it came to raw power. This beast, weighing up to 880 pounds or 400 kilograms, specialized in ambush hunting. Its muscular forelimbs were made for wrestling prey to the ground, and those infamous saber teeth were perfect for finishing the job with a precise, powerful bite. But here's the catch. Those saber teeth weren't invincible. If used wrong, like against a moving, dodging target, they could break. If these two ever squared off, it'd depend heavily on the setting. In an open field, the terror bird could dance around Smilodon, landing quick strikes while staying out of reach. But if Smilodon managed to get close enough, say in a forest or during an ambush, it'd be game over. Its strength and grappling ability would let it pin the bird and deliver a fatal blow. But let's be real, these two predators never actually met in the wild. The terror bird roamed North America during the Pleistocene, running into other predators like early wolves, but there's no evidence it ever crossed paths with Smilodon. Terror birds were built for speed and precision, while Smilodon was all about power and ambush. So who would win? In a straight-up fight, Smilodon's brute force might give it the edge, but with the right strategy and open space, the terror bird could hold its own. The truth is, both these predators dominated their environments in different ways, and imagining their clash is more about appreciating their unique adaptations than crowning a single winner. Dramornis Stiatoni was the largest of the Dramornithids, a group of giant flightless birds that lived in Australia. This bird, which lived during the late Miocene, around 10 to 5 million years ago, could weigh up to 500 kilograms, around 1,100 pounds, and stand over 3 meters tall, about 10 feet. It was heavier than the giant moa of New Zealand and taller than the elephant bird of Madagascar. 
Known as mihirungs, these birds had large, powerful lower jaws, stubby wings, and massive hind legs designed for running. Their feet were hoof-like, and they didn't have a keeled sternum, which is typically present in flighted birds. They're now thought to be closely related to waterfowl like ducks and geese, not ratites like emus and ostriches, which was previously believed. There's some debate over their diet. Many paleontologists believe they were herbivores, feeding on tough fruit and seeds. However, others think some species may have been carnivorous, based on the size and structure of their beaks. For example, the Geniornis species. Another, Dromonorthid, likely ate plants, as shown by the shape of its claws and eggshell analysis. On the other hand, beaks of larger Dromornithids, such as Dromornis stertoni, were more robust, suggesting they may have consumed meat. We don't have a lot of direct evidence for their behavior, but Geniornis has been found in large numbers, unlike carnivores, which are typically rarer in the fossil record. Some fossilized eggs of Geniornis were found in sand dunes, indicating they might have nested there. The oldest evidence of these birds dates back to the Eocene, around 50 to 40 million years ago, with the discovery of foot impressions near Brisbane. These impressions resemble the feet of later Dromornithids, like Geniornis, but without these specialized hoof-like toes. Previously, Dromornithids were thought to be closely related to ratites, flightless birds like emus, but current research places them within or near the Anseriforms, the duck and goose group, based on their skeletal features, like the structure of their jaws and feet. This connection is still debated among scientists. Andalgalornis was a mid-sized terror bird that lived in northwestern Argentina around 6 million years ago. Standing about 4.5 feet or 1.37 meters tall and weighing 90 pounds or 41 kilograms, it wasn't as massive as some of its larger relatives, but it was still quite intimidating. The bird had a huge skull, 14.5 inches long, and a narrow hooked beak, ideal for slashing at its prey. Researchers examined its skull using an X-ray CT scanner and discovered something interesting. Unlike most birds, which have flexible and light skulls, Andalgalornis had a rigid skull. This rigidity helped it exert force when biting down with its sharp beak. The skull was especially strong in the front-to-back direction, but had a hollow beak, which made it less effective for side-to-side -side movements. Paleontologists also used computer simulations to test how the bird would have bitten, pulled back, and shaken its head to tear through prey. These simulations revealed that the bird was built for precise, powerful strikes, capable of landing a direct downward jab with its beak. However, it wasn't built to withstand the stress of shaking its head side to side, which would have been damaging to its skull. The bite force of Andalgalonis turned out to be weaker than expected. In fact, its bite was weaker than that of many carnivorous mammals of similar size. Instead of relying on brute force, it likely employed a strategy of delivering quick, precise jabs and pulling back. Its strong neck muscles would have helped it dismember prey by ripping pieces off, or if possible, swallowing them whole. 